lies, shenanigans. All right, Gianni, you wanted to talk about the spy community saying the world is effed up. Is this truth, lies, or shenanigans? I don't know. You guys have to decide if these are truths or lies to you. So every four years, um, the American intelligence agencies put out global trends. Uh, this kind of book, or it's not for this. It's an assessment, actually, sorry, of where the world seems to be heading over the next two decades. In 2008, for example, the report warned about the potential emergence of a pandemic originating in East Asian in East Asia and spreading rapidly around the world. The world envisioned in the 144-page report, titled A More Contested World, mentioned a changing climate, aging populations, disease, financial crises, and technologies that divide more than they unite. So the latest report from last week finds that the pandemic um, has proved to be the most significant singular global disruption since World War II. Uh, the gap between the challenges and the institutions meant to deal with them continues to grow. So a solution mentioned by experts is to have a driving force to compel agencies to engage in longer term planning. And in other words, to anticipate rather than to react. So my question to the panel is, this is a pretty like sad report. Do you think any happiness will come from this or do you do you not necessarily agree with them with the with the intelligence agents let's go around real quick Robbie um I it, it, it's a bleak report but I'm on board with what they're saying uh, echo chambers are being created by social media like-minded people can find one another whether these are environmentalists or people who have a political agenda that they want to push we're dealing with resource scarcity, competition for land and water as we poison our water supplies slowly but surely. There's a lack of international gov governance and an ability to work globally together. This contributes to an ideology war, technology war, economic wars uh, between China and the Western world. You're gonna see more competition. Social inequity continues to strain our governments and peoples because of the growing mismatch between what we need and what the government can and will deliver. So I think that these reports are very well founded in fact, and they are very adept at projecting what's going to happen based on you know, how many decades of data. And also the AI that, that they can use to help extrapolate and predict, it's powerful, it works. Lizzie? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, harken back to what we just talked about 30 minutes ago, 30 seconds ago, 60 seconds ago. We're talking about a U.S. government that has not implemented a livable wage for its citizens. So absolutely, like, you know, this report is accurate. It should be taken into consideration. Um, I'm not surprised by any of it. But I, I, do I think that, you know the powers that be really care in certain respects? No, I think it's going to be the responsibility of the people to make sure that we, you know, overcome these hurdles, to make sure that we demand what we need to live in this country, to live on this planet. Mm -hmm. um, again, we have a government where in the United States, the federal minimum wage is $7.25. So yeah, with that in mind, the future is bleak. Who's living off of that? So this does not surprise me at all. Um, I, if I order something from DoorDash, once the show is over, it, I guarantee you it's gonna be more than $7.25. You had to work a whole hour to eat your meal. Exactly, <laughs> hour, more than hour. three hours, Two hours. probably. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah. I, I, yeah, I, Gianni, I, I think that um, it does suggest that the future is bleak and that in some respects, the future is only, the success of the future is only available to or cares, caters to a certain segment of our population worldwide. Because we're not just talking about the United States, Canada, Western world countries, 
there right. are there's a whole world outside of where we live that's living even beyond or lower than 725 an hour there are a lot of poor people on this planet who even though we you know talk about our struggles here their struggles there are just you know beyond that so yeah i i i, I buy into this um report 100 percent. i believe it but the question is are the powers that be looking at this do they care are they paying attention to this yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, none of it was a surprise to me. I think we've all been hearing it. It's just they're basically just been putting it into a report that um, it's coming from a group, an agency that has some clout. So, but I mean, it's 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 all all the information has been out there that the world is not going in the right direction, um, and we're seeing that. I mean, we're seeing the results of that. Um, Global pandemics, you know, people not eating, uh, you know, it's the climate changing. Hmm? Or even education. Or even education. Think think about how much it costs to get an education in the United States. Yeah, I think Olivia said something oh, earlier yeah. in the last one that she she had a hundred thousand dollar a hundred thousand uh, dollar in debt. Student loan debt. <laughs> but uh, from school loans, Listen, and she couldn't certainly I, find a hundred thousand dollar job. I, right. I have three degrees, okay? I have two undergrad degrees and I have a master's. Um, I, unbeknownst to me at the time, I paid off my student loans when I was still at Sports Illustrated. I had it, the, the payment every month extracted from my paycheck. And so money like that, you just, it doesn't occur to you. It's like, okay, it's already, what you get on your paycheck includes the extraction. So I never saw that. When I got the notice um, 18 years later that I had finally paid off my student loans, I cried a thousand tears 20 because years. I, it was, it was something that I just wow. never, I just assumed that this was always going to be a debt for me. And it was a lot of money. Like there was a lot of money coming out of my paycheck to pay for, wow. you know, undergrad and grad. And now I'm thinking about a PhD. Like it's it's a lot. It's a burden on a lot of people yeah. just to get yeah. educated. Just to get educated. All right. Uh, solutions to all these problems: cure narcissism. That's from Jeanette. Brown. <laughs> Abolish capitalism. Uh, she also <laughs> says she has a thousand left to go. Um, Kevin Thaxon, Once we have a working warp drive engine, things will get better. <laughs> uh, or, you know, once we start paying you know teachers and people who you know are everyday workers more than we pay ceos more than we pay people drug dealers more than we pay ladies of the night <laughs> then we may be able to you know get to an equilibrium there's men of the night okay. too I'm sorry, <laughs> men, you're absolutely right, Neil. Men and women of the night. Um, All right, Jacqueline Robinson says there was a time when state universities covered the bulk of in-state students' tuition. Uh, even preschools are frightfully expensive for parents. That's true. Yes. Yeah, that yes. too. That's bad. Yeah. Oh, Pre daycare. No joke in 2021. Like, oh my God, it's crazy. All right. it's Everything. Crazy. What the what the pr protocol is in Canada, Rob, but in the Un these United States, preschool has become like the thing, the uh -huh. thing. It preschool, daycare, Montessori schools, it's, but I know that just for daycare, daycare is a huge challenge uh, here because yeah, I, I know a lot of students, a lot of people who are just working, and when you have a kid in daycare, man. That's a huge expense. And if your kid's not going to daycare, you're still paying for your kid to go to daycare because you don't want to give up that spot. So you're, yeah. I've, I've heard of people paying for like two months of these daycare costs because they need that person available to them when they need that childcare. So it's just, wow. yeah. Very quickly, Rob, even, oh, sorry. 
Like a lot of people have to do interviews. Their kids have to go to on yep. interviews just to get preschool. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's All crazy. right. So we did have